Hi guys, I took an interest in this piece of retro technology following watching a video by the 8-bit guy where he demonstrated the differences between a few different models and I thought if I could get one on the cheap I'd check one out and that didn't work. I uh, paid quite a bit too much I think but uh, here we go anyway. I wouldn't really call it an unboxing video, it's probably more ends up being about the, <laughs> the pitfalls or the unexpected expense involved with this kind of thing. I don't mean to have a crack at the particular seller that sold me this one, which I haven't identified anyway. Uh, the, it, the camera is in very good condition, it it's, looks like it has been rarely used, and since I'm not so good at keeping it in shot here, I've got a couple of photos coming up. It's an interesting lens cap there, it's not opaque. It's actually used to point at the subject uh, to help with setting white balance. The crux of the whole device, of course, is that it's a floppy disk based camera. That's right, a 3.5 inch high density, 1.44 megabyte IBM formatted floppy disk drive camera. So firstly, this is what the battery pack looks like and I've already been into it because it's uh, not taking a charge and I've tried to wire it up to run the camera with a power supply just to test it out and see if there are any photos left on the three discs that were supplied with the camera. I'm showing the supply terminals here, but there's also an extra terminal missing because this is an empty case, which would presumably be a serial data line because this is a uh, Sony Infolithium battery. That's right, of course, I hate proprietary batteries. It's a pair of 3.7 volt lithium ion batteries. Uh, you can see the part number here and plan B I'll get to plan A in a minute, is to actually refill this pack and use the original electronics. Just to get started though, I thought I'd get away with powering the device with an external power supply through the battery terminals. Bow bow. For info, lithium batteries only. And auto power off. Ah. And of course, powering the device externally is only a problem because Sony want it to be. In fact, if you turn the device on and keep scrolling through different photos and don't allow the processor any time to think about the battery, you can keep using the thing indefinitely. That would of course only wear out the floppy drive and wouldn't display any photos, so now I've got to stop the video. I've got some floppy disks on the way, a Chinese ripoff charger and battery and also a floppy drive which I'll need to read the discs because I was only ever going to be able to view the photos through the LCD for now. It's two days later and of course my local electronics place didn't have the spot welded tagged batteries that I was after so I've tried a few new things and uh, this USB rechargeable battery is interesting. It's smaller than a normal battery so it'll have a, a reduced capacity but interestingly it can be charged directly with a USB port. Despite the reduced capacity these things interested me because I was um, worried that uh, working on a battery pack I'd make things bigger and it wouldn't fit in the original battery pack. I ended up setting these aside though and doing the unthinkable and soldering a pair of the higher capacity batteries. Uh, just because I've done this I definitely don't recommend it. I soldered the positive terminals inside but the negative terminals uh, transfer heat through the whole battery so that was outside with goggles. Here's one version of my battery pack. I did improve a little from here, tried to make things a bit more flat. Cutting the end off this battery cover was supposed to save me some space in the battery compartment in the camera, but I cut off the wrong end. It doesn't really matter though because it all fits in there without it. I've used a piece of plastic to insulate where these two terminals connect from the shield outside the battery cover on the hinge there, um, because they're not common points. Right now my meter reads 7.7 .7 volts DC across the battery terminals and it might not be as good as it sounds because that's open circuit and the, the camera does work uh, with this new battery pack but it's always reporting uh, a very low battery level for now. But I can skip through all the photos that are on the disk now. The drive loads these files much quicker than I expected it to. There's not much clunking between the display of each image.
and just navigating the menu I'm going to use a disk tool format and the format is obviously similar to a DOS quick format. There were 11 files on that disk so it was formatted in no time at all really. While I've got a battery pack open I might as well take a quick look at this uh, info lithium protocol which I assume is just serial. This LED is connected to the serial data line. I'm wondering if it is the uh, output of a battery or if there is actually two-way communication. If I were right into this I think I'd go for doing a little mod chip inside the camera itself. In any case the communication is continuous. It's worth a mention that uh, on EEV blog channel Dave pulled apart a Sony FD7 in an earlier model and it ran fine off a power supply without any of this info lithium protocol. Shortly after this I tested the battery pack and it doesn't try to initiate any communication on its own. I've also uh, put together a uh, ball bearing turntable just to take these fancy rotating shots. I can now take photos but without a PC floppy drive I'm stuck with uh, looking through them on an LCD screen on the camera itself. But I can take as many photos of Mr Snuggle Wuggles as I like. This would be the part where I'm expected to go out and take some photos of something and uh, show them on the screen, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm at the Ipswich and Nature Centre, um, a place where innocent animals are housed in captivity and uh, something I disagree with for the type of animals they keep, such as wallabies. Um, these are taken with the iPhone, I'm not trying to be a big photographer here, there's no tripods. I've got uh, the phone in one hand and the Sony camera in the other. I almost instinctively tried harder with the Sony Mavica. It was definitely on my mind for each disc that if you're wasteful you'll have to go back and delete photos to take more. Finally, I've got a bunch of discs and a floppy disk drive to go with it. The disk drive truly is plug and play, it works straight up in Mac OS and also in Windows 7. Alright, I've kept you waiting long enough, here are the real photos copied from disc. These are all Australian natives and this is a bearded dragon, I used to have a couple of these as pets. Um, these photos are shot through glass, that's how I can be so close to the enclosure. The one-eyed kangaroo, or with an eye closed, shot through a chain link fence. I don't know what this bird is, but these are both inside a walk-in aviary. This one's a male king parrot, uh, the female has uh, more green. The overall quality I suppose depends on what you're viewing it on. Uh, this Sony PSP is a 480x272 display and it looks quite acceptable. How about I shoot my electronics projects with this in future? Maybe not, but it is overall better than I expected. It's probably worth a mention that two of the three discs I used weren't recognised by the floppy drive on the computer until I copied them continuously using the Mavica disk copy function. This was simply a matter of copying a disk back to itself. Well I hope you enjoyed that and also thanks to the new subscribers that have joined up lately and uh, there could be a part two to this uh, doing something that uh, just about anyone could do but probably few would put in the effort. I hope you stick around and I'll see you next time.